Welcome to week eight of Parkside Youth Online. Some of uh, the guys and I were thinking that we might run a little bit of a competition. So as you know, on, on our Parkside Youth, we use Facebook and Facebook has different cover photos that you can use. We're actually in search of, does it? No, I'm supposed to be doing week eight. Did I say nine? Did eight? eight? Well guys, it is not, well why don't we just keep it running? It's the Parkside Youth, right? We don't need to be fully professional. Um, so it's week, it is actually week, week eight here. If I said week nine, I'm sorry, but hey, we're running a competition to try to get a new cover photo for Facebook. And what we want you to do is we want you guys to pull out your camera phones or pull out your, your you know, high resolution cameras and take some pictures and submit it to us. Get it across tonight, uh, today, because if, if we get a really, really good one, we want to make that our new Facebook uh, cover photo. And by the way, all right, we'll give you a voucher if you give us the best photo. How about that? Okay, everyone's, everyone's happy. So uh, take a few photos. Oh, that's coming up next week. That's coming up next week, yeah. All right, so it's week eight. That's, that's really what you need to know. Week eight, take a few pictures, send it across to us because we want some new promo material and uh, listen to this great message from Dave as we continue in our series, Jesus the Goat. And we'll see you in Zoom afterwards. Welcome all back to Parkside Youth. Um, once again, it's good to be here, although I can't wait till the day when the restrictions are fully over and we can join together once again. But today I'm just gonna get straight to the point. We're talking once again about um, Jesus the greatest of all time, obviously. But I wanna start with this verse that is written by the Apostle Paul. And I wanna start with it for a reason where he says, and then this is in Romans chapter seven, in case you want to find it. He goes, the trouble is with me, for I am all too human, a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what's right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. <clears throat> now, I don't, I don't know if I'm the only one in Australia who feels the same way sometimes, or if you guys also feel the same way, there are just sometimes where the things you want to do and you know are right and good and noble is not what you end up doing. And instead the things you don't want to do, the things you hate, the things that you sort of think, oh, I wish I could take that back, or why do I do those things? That's what we end up doing. And it just frustrates me to no end. But the Apostle Paul seems to have had the same problem and he, he attributes it to just the brokenness and the sin that's in the world, you know. Um, and so I want to talk a bit into that today and especially when Jesus makes another one of his statements in which he says, I am the vine. Now I'll read it to you. <clears throat> it's in John chapter 15 and he says, I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I'll remain in you. For a branch can't produce fruit if it's severed from the vine, and you can't be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you're the branches. Those who remain in me, and I in them, will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who doesn't remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. Now that was John chapter 15 from verse 1 to verse 8. Now Jesus here is talking, using a metaphor, the vine and the branches. But back in those days, um, agriculture was probably the main way that went about. I mean, I don't think they had a Woolies or, or a Coles that they just go down to, or a Fred's Grocer, where they just go and get their, get their fruit and veg. A lot of them would have farms or they'd work their land. So this idea of vines and branches was quite common to them. Now, Jesus is saying he is the vine, like a grapevine. Now, I come from an Italian background. I 
have to have a grapevine somewhere in my house. And I actually do have one. But he's saying, I'm the grapevine. That's what Jesus is saying. And you are the branches. And you can't produce any fruit unless you are attached to that vine. Seems to make sense, right? Basically, what he's saying is we need to be attached to him. If we want to bear fruit, as he calls it, fruit can be, you know, the good deeds we do, the things we want to do, those things that are noble, those things that are loving. But also Galatians talks about what's called the fruit of the spirit. So fruit of spirit in Galatians 5, 22 to verse 23 lists them like this. And it's not an all-inclusive list. It's just gives you an idea of what the fruit of the Spirit is. In, in verse 22 of chapter 5, it says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Now, all those things are great. And like this is the sort of fruit that we want to be producing. Love and joy and peace. Things that are produced within us, that we have peace and we have love and joy, but also that we give to others, that we share love, we share joy, we share peace. But if you want to simplify and boil it down even further, Jesus essentially simplified all the commands, all the laws, into love. He goes, love God with all your heart, mind, soul and strength, and love your neighbour as yourself. So to simplify this idea of fruit, what is the fruit Jesus is talking about that we're going to bear? It's essentially being able to love. Now, man, I fall short so often of being able to love because love, truly to love, is a selfless act. Once again, the Apostle Paul said, love is not self-seeking. So there are many, many times that I just fall short of that mark to love. But... We know because Jesus said that if we abide in him, if we live in him, if we dwell in him, if we remain in him, if we stay connected to him, the vine, then we will bear that fruit. We will be able to love increasingly each day. Now, as I read that, that passage of scripture that um, I read earlier in John about the vine, I see. Two, I just want to bring up two things there. One thing is the idea of bearing fruit and being fruitful versus not being fruitful. And the other idea is of actually being on the vine itself. You would have noticed that it says some branches that don't bear fruit are cut off, they wither, they die essentially. Now, I wanna just pose the question to you today. For starters, if you already know Jesus as your savior and as your Lord, then what is your fruitfulness. What does your life look like? What sort of things are you seeing? How are you seeing evidence of being able to love others like God has loved us? Loving your neighbours yourself. Like how is that going? And I'm not by any means being judgmental or critical. I'm just asking you to reflect a little bit on that. This, the second thing I want to ask as well is if you don't know Jesus, I know before I really had a concrete relationship with him, there was all manner of other things by which I was trying to satisfy like this hollowness, this emptiness in my life. You know, it might have been by just having fun at parties or it might have been by playing computer games. It might have just been by driving my car real fast and getting you know, an adrenaline rush, whatever it was. And, and I don't know what your things are, but what sort of things are we trying to do or to have in order to satisfy that need, that want, that longing we have in our life, which only Jesus can satisfy. So I want you to just reflect on those things for a little bit. And the beautiful thing about what we're just talking about is if you noticed one of the promises in those verses is it said, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. Now, when I first read this, I'm like, yes, I can ask for anything. I'll get my red Ferrari. Fantastic. But what he's actually talking about is if we really are connected to Jesus and if his words vibrate within our being so fully that he abides in us, then those things that we ask for, he will give us because we will be asking things which are motivated by love. And like I said earlier, love is selfless. It's not self-seeking. So we'll be, asking, we'll be asking God for other things, for others, for 
to help other people? How, how can we love other people? And yes, and at times also for ourselves, but it's this idea of loving God with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, our strength, and loving our neighbour as ourself. But now I've got this short video. It goes for about four minutes. I just want you to, as we reflect on where we stand, i.e., do I know Jesus as my Saviour, as my Lord, as my King? Or, or do I not know him? What is that desire, that longing that's in my life? Um, or also, if we do know Christ, what is the fruit of love look like in my life? As we reflect on that, as we watch the video, sorry, let's just reflect on that for a second or for a minute or whatever. And just think about it. Now, the video, I think it brings up a few good points. And when I watched it the first time, I thought it was a really good illustration. So I'm hoping it has the same, same result for you guys. But uh, yeah, watch the video and we'll come back, to, to, uh, we'll come back here later. You. Look at your eyes. Look at them. Speckled. Colourful. Each one unique. And I created every one of them. I created everything. The universe. And you. I gave you your personality. I made you pure. Complex. And every day, I give you life. I love you. But something happened. You cheated on me. You didn't trust me. You sinned. You cut yourself off from me. And although you're still alive, you're slowly dying. So you looked for other things. To fill the void. But nothing works. It just kills you faster. But it separates us more and more. What are you searching for? I created you, not to be destroyed, but to know me, so I became one of you, a fragile creation, I was tempted, but I never sinned, I came to save you, you have so many sins, and they have a cost, Someone has to die, you or me. So I took on your sin, traded in my life for yours, and I died in your place. Because I love you. Then, rose from the dead. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am Jesus. I'm not here to condemn you. I came to bring you back to life. Rely on me. I will forgive you and give you eternal life. I love you. And I did all of this to have a relationship with you. Will you follow me?
Well, I hope you got something out of that video. I know I sure did, and every time I watch it, I still do. But you can really get a sense when you watch that video of how being disconnected from Jesus is like we're slowly dying. Yes, we're alive, but we're slowly dying. Or yes, we're alive, but there's this want and longing for something that we just don't have and we can't escape the brokenness and sinfulness of the world that we seem to be trapped in until Jesus comes along and does it for us. And as we connect with him more and more, he transforms our heart. He gives us life. He, he gives us the ability to day by day get closer and closer to the people we were created to be and to, to, for, and, and to do the things that he made us to do. And, and instead of being in this stunted position where we end up doing the things we hate, he works in us so that we start to do things which, which bring us joy and fulfillment and show the love of God to, to, to God and to others. Now, I just want to say how, how important it is, obviously, that we stay connected to Jesus and that, you know, through reading his words in scripture, through just talking to him every day, through just thinking about him as you're walking through your day at school or work or wherever you're going, just thinking about him, talking to him, sharing your, your stories about Jesus and how he's working your life with others, just encouraging another, you know, attending church or just the prayer. It's so important because the more we do that, the more he helps us to bear that fruit. You know, I had a peach, I have a peach tree actually. And one summer, there were so many peaches on the branches. Now, peaches are like one of my favorite fruits. So many peaches on the branches. I'm just looking at them thinking, oh, a couple more weeks and we're going to have some delicious peaches. But what actually ended up happening was it was a really hot summer and I didn't water my tree. And because there was not enough water, the peach tree dropped all of its fruit. All the peaches, every single last peach before it was even close to being ripe, fell off. And it's purely what happens when there's no nourishment going to the branches. Because it was so hot, the peach tree withdrew. Uh, now, Jesus is unlike the peach tree in that he stops nourishing us. But what happens is we start to walk away from him sometimes. And so we start to starve ourselves of the nourishment that he gives us. And then we start to notice in our own life, and I'm saying this out of my own experience, we start to notice in our own life that that fruitfulness or that, that example of love and, and the actions that demonstrate love seem to be lacking and we become more self-centered, we become more critical, more cynical, more judgmental, more self-centered. So today I just want to really pose the challenge to you. If you a, don't know Jesus and feel that longing in your heart, can I encourage you to just ask him to come into your life? You know, there's no secret prayer. There's no magic words you need to say. It's just about being open to Jesus, trusting in him, believing in what he's done for you. Can I ask you to do that? And if you are already a follower of Jesus, can I just ask you to just assess how much you've been tapping into him lately? How much time you've been spending with him? And if it's something that's been lacking, which is so easy to happen, we get just swamped over with everything else in life, schoolwork, other stuff that happens, housework, work, whatever it is. If, if you've just been lacking in your time spent with Jesus, can I really encourage you to make a commitment tonight and to actually figure out times where you're going to say, these times I am going to spend just with Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I thank you because you're such an amazing God and you give us such amazing promises. And I thank you because... You've recognised that all alone we can't do it. We can't do those things that you, you, you want us to do or the things that we even want to do all alone. And so you've given us a way. 
Lord, that you've given us the ability and the strength that you work within us in such a way that we can bear that good fruit, we can love, Lord, and that, that, that sense of satisfaction that we feel comes from you and you fill our lives and make it full and joyful. Lord, I just ask today that anyone who's heard this, Lord, that you'll speak to their heart. Lord, I know it's not my words which will convince anyone, but Lord, at the end of the day, it's your words and your Holy Spirit as you work in us. And I just ask that you do this work in us, Lord. Lord, that you help us to bear fruit, to draw our nourishment from you instead of going to all manner of other things, thinking that's what's going to satisfy us. But rather to draw it from you, Lord, and to day by day, Grow more and more in love. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys so much for uh, watching that powerful talk. And Dave, thank you so much for your inspirational message. We're about to jump onto Zoom. And in case we forget to mention it, please remember to submit your photos. We want some great uh, promotional material. We want a new cover photo for Facebook. Uh, we'll see you on Zoom in one second. And hey, why don't we celebrate and end this night with a, a nice quote from The Simpsons. Hello, my name is Mr. Burns. Okay, Mr. Burns, what is your first name? I don't know. We'll see you in Zoom. Okay, I kind of made a mistake. So the full quote is, Hello, my name is Mr. Burns. I believe you have a letter for me. Okay, Mr. Burns, what is your first name? I don't know. See you in Zoom. Do kids still watch The Simpsons?